Hello friends, today I'm gonna show you the framework which has an end-to-end -end integration with the data services and the data science. So before moving further, I would like to explain what data services and data science meant for. At a high level, data services are for the data engineers and the data science is for the data scientists. In this data analytics world, uh, data gets stored in a source database via the domain system. Big data engineers pull the data from the source system and inject it into the SDFS, that is a Hadoop distributed file system, or S3 in AWS simple uh, storage system, uh, or some uh, data engineers store it directly into the Hive tables, uh, or we can put it into the other client environment too. Uh, so our journey starts from the extracting the data from the source system inject it into the big data environment and perform some transformation on the data after that either uh, the data scientists generate the traditional static report or it would be a real-time report uh, using the kafka uh, or a spark real-time system using the flink streaming and all uh, so that i'm going to explain you further in this videos uh, so this is just an overview which i'm going to explain you now and send this transformation transform data to the data scientist to get a more insight or a characteristic of a data then the data scientist does the data mining uh, they uh, do the exploratory data analysis and prepare the model to predict or prescribe the new events. So uh, I have observed the big, there is a huge gap between the big data engineers and the data scientists, uh, the way they are approaching the data. So big data engineers biggest nightmare is to choose which technology to choose for the data pipeline, whether they can choose uh, for a real time streaming, they can choose the Kinesis and the uh, AWS or uh, they can uh, choose the Apache Open Framework from, uh, that is Kafka or a Confluent Kafka. Uh, or they for a data streaming, they can choose uh, either the Spark or they can also uh, go for a Flink. So the, it all depends on the kind of a use case they have. So this framework will help them a lot to choose a technology or they don't uh, bother it which technology to choose. Uh, the default they can get an optimized technology. So uh, this PDF uh, framework is all about that. So uh, okay, uh, coming back to the data centers, uh, so uh, the big data engineer biggest nightmare is to choose which technology to choose for the data pipeline and the data scientist uh, doesn't get the clean data from the system uh, uh, doesn't get a clean data from the source system wherein his or her 60 to 70 percent of her time is getting wasted in doing the basic transformation which can also be done from the data services uh, while pulling the data or while injecting the data from the source system to the SDFS or in a S3 that time also the certain transformation can be done to the data pipeline so the, because of this gap the uh, data engineer just pull the data doing the certain transformation and give it to the data scientist while the data scientists struggle to do the certain kind of a transformation which can also be done by the previous data engineers so to fill this gap this data framework is developed so uh, the a PDAP is a framework to overcome all these issue and created a workbench for the data scientists too uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you the capabilities of the PDAP. Uh, so let's get started. So before starting it, I just uh, want to show you or tell me about myself also. Uh, yes, I am Prakar Agarwal. I am a full stack data scientist. And uh, I'll give you a brief overview about myself at the end of this video. Uh, so I will currently we'll just focus on for what this video has been meant for so let's get started so i have created a virtual box uh, in the virtual box uh, in a, i have uh, installed the ubuntu uh, so ignore this and let's get started with an ubuntu uh, it would take some time to boot ubuntu so let's wait for a few seconds
Uh, so let me pause till the time it's get started. Uh, so yes guys so here I have created a two user one is for myself and one is for the Hadoop users so the admin all the admin access I have given it to the Hadoop as well as for the uh, the another user that is Prakar so it has uh, Prakar would be having a lot more access uh, uh, but currently for this PDAP all the relevant access been given to the Hadoop user uh, so uh, uh, I'll just uh, sorry I'll just start with Hadoop user so I'll put in my password so it gets started uh, so this session is to just give an overview i will not explain you the technology how i have done it this would be explained in my later videos which i'll be publishing it so currently i'll just give you an overview so that uh, it would be good for everyone to understand on which technology they have to concentrate on or whether this video would be relevant for the uh, audience or not for you and if you have a certain uh, feedbacks or thing yeah you can also uh, let me know uh, uh, in later i like will give you where i you need to post all your queries and all so uh our project uh, this is the directory wherein i have a certain file so i just execute my flask pdf flask and yes started so uh this is uh, what i have done it in a single node cluster in a hadoop as well as uh, uh, whatever i did it i did it in a single node cluster which can also be done in a distributed system uh, so that is the uh, one thing and i have also tested into a distributed system but currently because of the other systems non availability i'll just show you everything into the single uh, uh, d single node okay uh, so this is oops uh, right so this is the first uh, picture of uh, how the PDAP would be look like so you can experience a self-service data platform with the power to connect capture integrate store or analyze the or decode the structure and the non-structured data so this is the framework what has been developed for it is for a cognitive ai platform wherein we are integrating the data services as well as the data science together so uh, before that i'll just uh, give you an overview of how the, it would work so this is for a data scientist uh, this workbench is for the data scientist wherein we can inject the data and once the data has been injected into the system uh, we will split it uh, into 70 30 percent ratio or whatever uh, it would depend upon the sampling or the kind of a data we have then the uh, a data scientist needs to do the exploratory data analysis when the exploratory data analysis would be done they will train the model and after training the model they will test the model and see whether the result would be uh, as per the expected and if not again they will do the hyper tuning or tuning and then do the uh, uh, exploratory data analysis again and then again train the model based and test it with a, a validated data sets uh, and once the test model would be okay and uh, data scientist feels that okay it would give an appropriate result that would be execute it into the production environment so these are the framework which i'll going to explain further uh, how it would work uh, so uh, as of now we'll pack it for it and we'll concentrate on our data services in this uh, video so this data services 
would be uh, how to prepare the ETL pipeline. Uh, this pipeline can be created in two ways, either in a batch mode or in a real-time streaming mode. Uh, so the real-time mode, the architecture is uh, that so from the source system, the scoop would pull the data into an SDF or an HF, and then the Spark will to the streaming in a real time uh, so it uh, so uh, it's an in memory computation so it would be much faster than a higher one uh, which will do the map reduce transformation so we'll use the hive uh, it pulls the data from the hive and do the real time streaming and then after having a certain transformation uh, it will again put into the another table of a an hive and then uh, generate a report uh, accordingly uh, or send the data to the data scientist while in case of a real time streaming again uh, we have a source database wherein we need to pull the data so here we have a new concept called as a cdc so it is a uh, change data captured so what are the changes we are having it uh, for an example we have an employee table in an employee table either we can do the update create delete uh, so only the incremental changes would be real time stream to the uh, target system uh, so here i have used the debezium uh, cdc connector uh, which will connect to the kafka cluster and once it's uh, so i'll explain you each component what kafka cluster is what debezium cbdc connector what is scoop hive in my further videos so this is just an overview so that you can get to know what are the technology i have used this for a pdf all right so it we will put the uh, inject the data from uh, source system through the Debezium CDC connector and put it into the Kafka cluster. So Kafka cluster is a distribution uh, distributed uh, messages system uh, wherein uh, it uh, we store the data in a Kafka topic and from the Kafka uh, and then after that we'll stream the data. So streaming of the data can also be done in a multiple ways. Uh, we have a Kafka stream. We can do it from the uh, case SQL. We can also do it from the Spark and Flink. So currently I'll go on a explain you how do we do it with a Spark as it is a cutting edge technology. But yes, it can be done if it is a financial data or if it is a uh, structured data it can be easily done to the kafka stream and a case sql also and then uh, once it would be done uh, we will put it into the nosql database that is a mongodb and then the real time streaming visualization uh, would be done uh, from the mongodb so i'll just give you the uh, overview of how it works so in etl based system uh, first of all we need to initiate hadoop so we need to start the yarn secondary node data node uh, so uh, it can be done through the single click if you see uh, so here we are starting the name node uh, so i'll get the password the name node is getting started and after that it will ask for starting the data node yes right so data node is, is getting started i think uh, i have entered the wrong password yes now it is right so data node is getting started and now the secondary node uh, so i put the correct password and now it is starting the secondary node so once this get started uh, yes uh, everything is started we'll see this uh, data node is started name node is started and secondary node is started so once this is started we need to choose the database uh, which database we need to inject the data from db2 oracle mysql postgre or teradata uh, so let it be simple uh, we'll make it simple i uh, will make it as a mysql we need to give them a host name either it would be the uh, local host or i put it into this and uh, this is my port whether you need to give a schema what is schema we need to give it we can put it over there uh, so uh, we'll keep it as a demographic details uh, the table name is employee as of now i'll give it as an employee and the scope parameter whether you need to store the data into an sdfs or into a hive table so uh, whichever way uh, i'm fine with anything uh, so as of now i make it simple i'll put it into an sdfs and later on i'll show you how to make it in a 
uh, hive table also uh, so uh, mode so what is a mode uh, either you need to inject the whole data set from the source system and put it into the data or you need to also do the incremental changes so we can schedule uh, this is cube job and every day only the change data would be entered into the or would be injected into the Hadoop distributed system uh, so that can also be done so once we'll execute this ETL uh, this uh, all the job would get started and it will put it into the Hadoop distributed health system another way of a real-time streaming uh, yes it is a similar type of a streaming wherein we need to give this mysql data and the host name we need to give we need to also give the port name the same details uh, here i have used the kafka connect and a debezium but since i have used a source system as a mysql i'll be using a mysql debezium dcdc and these are the certain uh, producer topic and all which i'm gonna explain in uh, my further videos what is topic each and everything would be explained it in details uh, so i'll give it as a, a kafka topic and my consumer would be mongodb as per my previous video my target and confluent uh, this target schema would be mysql db and i can also enter anything uh, so this is just uh, the ease of a big data or an engineer so they need not to write a code to all the stuffs right uh, and i'll give the employee so i'll start this execute real time streaming i need to initiate the kafka so i'll start and initiate the kafka uh, will take so in this uh, as uh, i'll go uh, gonna explain you that we need to first start the zookeeper so the zookeeper so for this also we have a certain command which we need to execute it uh, so uh, it, it is all automated so end user need not to do anything this is an admin job admin job will do the initiate job initiate the kafka and it will start your zookeeper your kafka your schema starting the schema registry after that uh, it will also start the kafka connect and uh, kafka uh, k sql so there are a lot of things which it will get started so to make your environment ready so uh, let's wait for a second once it would be done uh, so it is starting uh, i'll just uh, So yes guys, uh, so it has started. Uh, so all the services of the Kafka is started now. And uh, uh, we'll see uh, the control center also. Yes, we have a healthy cluster wherein we can see uh, that we have a topic. Uh, so yes, we are having uh, topics too. And uh, the connector, KSQL, we'll see it later on. Uh, so before starting it i'll just uh, start a data streaming so the data is getting streamed so uh, the uh, behind of this logic i have used a scala uh, spark scala uh, and a spark uh, python pi spark that we call it so the data is getting streamed uh, so i'll also show you over here uh, sorry uh, this is the stream visualization okay so stream visualization uh, i need to uh, execute the service first for a stream visualization just give me a moment so here, here we have a project friend and and yes the service of this is started now so i hope it will work now uh, yes it started so the real time streaming is happening right now uh, yes the start is not working because i have done the streaming day wise uh, so i need to start it as a time wise so you can see the data streaming but yes the data streaming is happening it over there uh, so uh, being since this is an overview uh, i am gonna explain you in further videos uh, now uh, coming to the product overviews so what is this product overview is what is the capability and what it can does uh, do uh, for this uh, data world 
so you can experience the transformation to the data intelligence it is for the data science and the data services yes for the data scientists i have not shown it i'll be showing it enough for the videos because the certain development is also being in progress so once it will get completed i'll create a separate videos and post it for all the data scientists uh, and this is uh, it is for a data science process for real time streaming best streaming data visualization you'll see that real time data visualization and uh, i think i would also uh, show you the kind of a data visualization we did I just uh, give me a moment mm, uh, this was the one which i think it will still work yes it is still working so if you see the data visualization uh, it is an interactive one right so if you'll give there are a certain data so if you'll give this only this video this uh, variable or this column shows uh, how it would work uh, and if you so any of the status so over here if you see the status uh, so you need to choose the variable for which you need to sh show the graph so this is a more interactive one right you can you want to choose the pie chart you can choose the pie chart if you want to choose the department you can also choose the department you see you can see it uh, data is getting streamed and uh, if you want to See that for a categorical var variable, you can see the categorical value. Uh, as of now, I prepared only the pie chart, but there are a lot of other chart also which get injected over here, so that's not an issue at all, uh, right? So, uh, so coming back and scheduling and monitoring also through the Airflow or an Uzi. Uh, so we have a data capture connector which I already discussed it with you all guys that are for a Debezium it is already been done and now uh, for a data science uh, people it is give you uh, inside decisions and it would be automated all these things so yes there are such a manual work which would be required like for exploratory data analysis and all but uh, there are many things which can be automated uh, which we see in a day-to-day -day life uh, we are repeating the work so that has already been automated uh, which i'll show you in later videos so these are the cutting edge technologies to build this uh, platform uh, i have used the kafka kafka stream case sql Pice, spark spark with uh, Scala, Debezium, MySQL, Kafka Topic, MySQL as a database, MongoDB, Airflow, TensorFlow, Keras for a deep learning and even I am currently using a PyTorch also so I will show you there. Python for a machine learning and for a front end uh, I use HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, Dash also which I have not uh, updated this I suppose uh, Flask for a REST API Plurty D3JS for a data visualization so and this is an architecture for a real time streaming of uh, how the data would come into the topic and then go into the Kafka brokers and then Kafka broker will from consumer will pull the data from the Kafka broker and then the messages is getting streamed uh, so after that the spark uh, would do the real time processing and put it into the target table uh, so all this component would be explained in my later videos and finally uh, it's me it's platform is pdap that is plucker data analytics platform uh, this is all about me i'm working as a full stack data scientist solution architecture uh, this pdap has been conceptualized two year backs and now it is being coming in a proper shape so i'm having an expertise in the data services spark high by spark spark and scalar kafka kafka stream real-time processing scoop for import and export airflow for a scheduling no sql database postgrep MongoDB, Cassandra, Debezium CDC, even the Kafka Connect would be having a many APIs to connect it. So I have worked on a uh, good amount of a technology. And the, coming back to the data science, yes, uh, I have developed many deep learning models. Uh, I've built an uh, interactive chatbot, uh, free tests jackpot which uh, is been used by one of our customer and it is a thumbs up for us nlp natural language processing to get an insight from the data or uh, from the text uh, yes for classifications and uh, 
there are a lot of use cases in which I have uh, machine learning algorithms, statics, uh, statistical modeling, network analysis, and the platform uh, on which I have worked on is a uh, Hadoop, AWS, EMR, Lambda, SageMaker for a DevOps, CS, Team City, Jenkins, CI/CD, Pipeline, Zira for a front end, HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, Bootstrap, and Flask. Uh, so this is all about. Uh, the PDAP, if you like this videos or if you want to give certain comments, uh, I will certainly be dropping my email ID or you can uh, just give your comment uh, uh, below this. Okay, so thank you guys. Uh, just let me know if you want anything and to contact me, I'll give my uh, email ID uh, below to this link and uh, just. Uh, Happy data analysis and happy data engineers. Thank you all.